Hey everybody, good morning. It is Pete. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. It is Wednesday, June 10th, 2020. <clears throat> got a little sore throat. Today we got a good one for you. Today we're going to discuss how to create a game plan, which is basically taking your trading strategy and creating a hit list of stocks that you're going to watch. And there's a whole process that we're going to go through. Uh, so we actually got a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation today. It's um, it's actually critical, and I actually have the word critical on the slide, um, that you understand, that you understand when you have a strategy, <clears throat> and then you go and find ideas that match your strategy, all of the stress just gets eliminated from trading because now you're not overwhelmed, now you're not trying to look at everything, you're only looking for what you need to see. If it's there, great, you just basically sit back and you put on the trades that match your edge. Uh, if it's not there, just as importantly, is you do nothing. I, and I know that's hard to believe, but we're actually seeing uh, some newer members in the community uh, come in and they just want to be active. They just want to trade. They just want to get involved. And quite honestly, that's one of the dumbest things you can do. <laughs> it's, it's in those trades that aren't planned. It's in those trades that don't, don't, don't match your strategy, don't match your edge, don't match your, your probability of profit. That's where your money goes to die. That's where your money basically is um, put in harm's way without a chance of moving in your favor. So what we're going to discuss today is a step-by-step -step process um, that walks you through how to set up ideas of when the market's obvious and key, something we actually noticed yesterday in a really big way, uh, relative strength and relative weakness and how to trade that relative strength and relative weakness. So in other words, yesterday, the market was very weak, but technology stocks were strong. And we saw Facebook and Apple and a couple of other stocks like that break out to new highs. So it's interesting to make note, even from one day to the previous one, and even from week to week, which for, for those of you that are working a full-time job and uh, what we call swing trading or position trading, where you're holding trades a little bit longer, uh, you still need to notice that stuff. Because I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, again, we'll just use yesterday because it's real world. The uh, market was getting hit. The market was coming down very hard, um, but certain stocks were rallying. Certain stocks were making new highs, even, even as a matter of fact, all-time highs. So what does that mean? What do you actually do with that information? So now you make note of that when the market gets strong, which might happen today, we'll see, although the FOMC meeting is today, so the market volume probably a little bit lighter today. Um, those are the stocks that you want to turn to first when the general market has buying. You can still buy them when the market's weak. It's just that there's much more money doing the same thing and, the, and then the, uh, the market and those stocks tend to move faster. So we're gonna get into this little presentation and then we're actually gonna go back and forth to a uh, charting platform that I use, a scanning platform, which by the way is a free service that I use. I would never show you anything that you had to pay for uh, as far as tools are concerned um, because I want you to be able to actually go out and implement what we're showing. If you have any questions about this stuff, absolutely subscribe to the channel. This way you get updates for me doing answers to stuff that you guys have. Uh, on top of that, if you have questions or feedback, leave that in the comments uh, and I'll answer those in a future video as soon as I can. Uh, if you really want to take this stuff deeper, definitely click down to the bottom and learn more about the boot camp because you'll really uh, understand this in a big way where you wake up every day and every week expecting to make money. So. Uh, we're going to go right into it now, so let's have some fun with this. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, definitely shoot me an email. And uh, excuse me, definitely leave a comment. So what we're going to discuss now is the game plan. The game plan is actually building a list of stocks that match your trading strategy. Your trading strategy, in my case, is order flow, saturation points, tape reading. It's when I believe I look at something and I build that argument and I say, this is definitely going to happen and this is definitely gonna happen because of all of these things. Now, definitely is in the context of probabilities. So, critical is you create a game plan. A game plan means you go into every day saying, these are the stocks every week. These are the stocks that I wanna watch. These are the ones I wanna buy. These are the ones I wanna sell because it matches my strategy. So now we're gonna get into what exactly does that mean, right? So, game plan thought process. The goal is to be prepared, not reacting. That is a huge part of trading. Too many traders, especially new traders, and again, I see this with new traders coming into the boot camp, that they are 
watching a scanner as the market's unfolding and they want to buy that and they want to buy that and they want to buy that. And all of a sudden they, they trade, they just traded five stocks they never heard of until a scanner popped up. Don't do that. <laughs> that is the hardest way to make money. And quite honestly, it's the hardest way to ever have conviction in an idea. You want to be prepared from the market closing to the next day, from one week to the next, you have a list and you're just going to sit back and you're going to say, those are the ones I'm looking at. And that's going to make trading easy for me today. So look for ideas during non-market hours. Again, that's kind of the same concept. I can't stress that strongly enough. Have a definite idea of the best game plan is to be a buyer or a seller for today. And this is a big problem as well, too. And yesterday was a good example of that. Most of the stocks that you would normally watch, most of the stocks that um, have participated in this raging bull market that we've had since the bounce off the lows um, in March, you don't want to be looking for stocks to short sell. Why would you want to be looking for stocks on the opposite side of the market when the easy money or the obvious money, the obvious order flow is bullish and going to the upside? So a definite idea. And <clears throat> the reason I bring that up is we just mentioned relative strength, relative weakness. You want to note relative weakness. That doesn't mean you want to trade relative weakness when everybody else is looking to the other side. So keep that in mind, definite side. Market hours should be for executing your ideas and scenarios from your trading plan and exploiting your edge. So you're really just sitting back and saying, no, I'm only looking for ideas in those stocks. I don't care about anything else. And I know that sounds like you're gonna be leaving money on the table in case something's exploding and nothing could be further from the truth because think about it. You wanna allocate money where you have maximum conviction in your ideas. And how could you possibly have conviction in an idea that just blipped on a screen <clears throat> because of a, a, a trading alert that you set uh, the stock just hit the last five minute high. It's almost impossible to have conviction. You want to say, I did all my work. I built an amazing argument. And now I'm only going to look at these ideas. Plan for contingency, trade management, and risk management. So basically what these contingencies mean is how heavy or light am I going to trade today based on the market? How long do I plan on holding my trades <clears throat> based on the market? So for example, yesterday, sorry, the market was much weaker. So trades to the upside took much longer to unfold because most of the pressure in the market yesterday was selling. So you would probably hold those trades with a little bit longer patience. You would probably use something like moving averages because momentum really was non-existent. So you have to plan for you go, how you're going to do that. You're also going to plan your risk management. How much do you want to risk per trade based on the fact that you're a buyer on a day that most of the market's going down. So you'll adjust that strategy. So a very quick, big picture outline of actually creating a game plan. So timeframes, you start out, we look at all of these, monthly, weekly, and daily, and you wanna see, is all that money, so here's the thought process. Is all of that money doing the same thing? Are most of the charts I'm looking at going up on the monthly chart, the weekly chart, the daily chart? This is how you start to form your, your, your bias. This is how you start to form your conviction looking at these ideas. Next, you look at those multiple time frames and you start out with the major indices. You look at the S&P 500, you look at the Dow Jones, you look at the NASDAQ, it could be the Qs, it could be the NDX, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. So you look at multiple time frame analysis of all of these pieces. First, you're looking to see, does the market have a strong bias? Then you break it down and you go into the individual sectors and you see if any of those sectors are in sync with what the market's doing. So you can see we're, we're starting to build a little bit of an argument, right? And I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second. Then within those sectors, there's industries and subgroups. So you might have technology, and then within the technology sector, there might be hardware, there might be software, there might be semiconductors, like that kind of thing. So you start to break that down a little bit more. And then we keep going. Then you look for the leaders within those industries and subgroups. And when I say leaders, we're talking about those that are trading with the market on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily timeframe. Then you look to see which of those have the most volume on a regular basis, which ones have the most volatility on a regular basis. And when you have liquidity and opportunity in market leaders that are following the market, you can start to see that you get a lot of conviction in your ideas because a lot of the market's doing this, the sector's doing this, the industry's doing this, and the three market leaders in that sector are doing this. Wow, I think I found some gold here. And that's really what creating a game plan is. You're searching for gold every day and every week. And the easier this becomes, the easier it is for you to be profitable. And again, I'm giving you the overview here. If you want to do this with me in real time, obviously, um, let's get together. Sign up for the boot camp. 
So next we have order flow, significant levels, probability, and your best idea. So you see we go all the way from what charts to look at to the very last section, which is, is order flow obvious? So are buyers or sellers doing something obvious? What significant levels do I need to trade around? What significant levels do I need to know? That's tape reading. Remember tape reading in the video we did yesterday, our price is moving closer to or further away from a, a significant level. That's tape reading. Then you set up, what are the probabilities of me making money? How strong is my edge? Then you take it to the very last piece, which is getting to the point of which of everything I just looked at based on the market, based on the market of multiple timeframes, based on breaking down by the sector, breaking down the leaders, breaking it down by order flow, which of these ideas am I willing to go out there and say, you know what, I just built a great argument for a trade. Which one of those ideas are going into my game plan? Next, choices of what to put into your game plan. You do top-down analysis, which is exactly what we just did. And you look at the market, the sectors, the industries, and then you choose the leading stocks that have liquidity and opportunity. Then you look for technical scanning. So this is a separate way of doing it. Now you're looking at all stocks that have technical criteria with no parameters to market correlation. So in other words, you're just looking for stocks that are strong or weak, and you might want to trade them long. You might want to trade them short. You're not really taking into consideration the market. You're just looking for ideas. So every day I'll run scans on the long side to be a buyer and I'll run scans on the short side to be a seller because like yesterday, on a day when the market's weak, you do not want to be selling strong stocks. You want to be selling weak stocks. So I had a list, a small list because of the market going up most of the last three months um, and you had stuff on both sides. Then the last part is you have your personal universe, which by the way, number three here is the easiest way in my opinion to be consistent is to build the a list of anywhere from 10 to 15 stocks that you look at every day, and then you choose from those stocks. Stocks don't wear out. You could go in there and trade them every single day. And if you don't believe that, there's hedge funds that focus on nothing but the same group of stocks. So if it's good enough for a hedge fund, why wouldn't it be good enough for you? Then the, what I believe is the most complicated one and the mo by far the most um, challenging, uh, especially for somebody who's not a full-time market participant, which is, uh, trading what might even be called reacting to announcements such as earnings, upgrades, downgrades, FDA announcements, um, chief executive officer being fired or hired. Uh, like today we have interest rates. This last one is very challenging. In my opinion, um, the first three are by far the easiest way to have conviction and really be um, confident in your ideas. The last one really requires a lot of skill. There's a lot of upside potential, but very hard to um, manage for somebody who's brand new. Uh, and again, all trades should always have a pre-scan filter for volume and volatility to match your resources. So in other words, in my universe, no matter which stocks that fit the criteria here in numbers one through four, I still want 2 million shares average per day and a minimum uh, of $1.50 um, average true range, which is the liquidity and the opportunity before we even get into um, a trade. So a lot to consider there, right? So that's really what we do every single day. But here's the key. It's not hard. And actually, you know what? I want to show you that one thing. I want to just go back to the screen. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I actually forgot that I had this up on my screen. So we're going to go right here. So, you know, we've been watching FinViz every, every day. It's pretty much been the scanner. So you click over here on groups. And then you click over here on overview. And you can see the various sectors. And then you start to break it down. Well, first, you know, the market was weak yesterday. Now you happen to notice that technology was strong. So you would click through to technology. And now you would filter it down even more. So you see there's 597 stocks. So obviously, these are only stocks we're talking about. So we don't have to sort that. I want an average of 2 million shares per day. So now it's only 127 stocks. I want to break it down even further to average true range, which this is liquidity for volume, opportunity for average true range, and that broke that down to 68 stocks. Now we're going to actually take it a step further, and we're going to say which stocks closed very strong yesterday. We're going to use up by 2%. So only nine stocks met the criteria. So those would be the stocks that had incredible relative strength yesterday compared to the market. So remember that last little box in the corner we actually talked about now you put your list of stocks together that you believe are your best ideas for the day. Some stocks might meet the criteria, but they not, might not be good ideas for today. And that's the last little piece 
uh, to the equation to understanding how to set up a big list of, um, not a big list, your list <laughs> of stocks to trade. But here's the key, and this is really where one, um, where, where I had a really good conversation with somebody yesterday. Then you still need to understand how to manage the trade between entry and exit, because we can all get into the trade at the same exact time, but if you, un if you, if you fail to understand trade management and actually understand how to make money after you buy the stock and how to get out at the right time, uh, you're going to have a lot of good ideas. You're probably not going to lose as much money if you um, call out good ideas and find good ideas, but you're going to be frustrated that you're not coming out the other side and actually seeing your account go up every single month. So the last little piece that we could probably work on together uh, if you decide to uh, come with us into the boot camp uh, is actually learning in real time uh, actually how to manage the winners that you now found um, using this criteria. So again, this is a very high level overview. There's a lot more to it, but at least um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of structure to at least look and say, well, is the market obvious? And what does that mean? And how do I look at some ideas? So um, if you find these videos helpful, absolutely click down and subscribe. That would mean the world to me. If you have any feedback, leave a comment below the video, give us a thumbs up. If you've also, if you found it good and um, I'll speak to you soon. Have a great day.